Well, you don't need tank if you never get hit. That's the name of the game with the Kaldari Navy hook bill. This is vid three of our Alpha Abyss series. So if you want all the tips, fits, and tricks to get all the isk out of your free to play account, you came to the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Loru here, digital advertiser, content creator, and Eve enjoyer for the better part of 10 years now. And this is the hook bill. Now, if you're brand new to Eve, this is vid three of our Abyss Alpha series. Every video in this playlist is chock full of goodies just popped up in the right corner for you. So why the hook bill next? I thought we were in a destroyer. Why are we going back to frigates? Well, how the Abyss works is that you're actually gonna get more loot if you're in a smaller ship. Only cruisers, destroyers, and frigates are allowed into the Abyss. Cruisers are more tanky, can do more damage, but get less loot. Destroyers are in between and get more loot than cruisers. Frigates are the least tanky, the fastest, and don't necessarily do as much DPS as the cruisers. We'll get to that. But frigates get the most loot. They get about three times as much loot as the cruisers. So even though you're not necessarily in a better ship, you're going to be getting way more isk per hour in the hook bill. Now, in my tests, we were making between 35 and 40 million isk an hour with this, doing the same calm or tier one abyss we were doing with the Korax in our last video. So it's effectively double the isk per hour you were making in the previous ship. And this is due to a couple reasons. The hook bill has some awesome traits that increase its damage. A stacking bonus to light missile damage, as well as a stacking bonus to almost all the missile type damage. The only damage type the hook bill does not increase is kinetic damage, which is totally fine. And then finally, more max velocity. You can hit stuff further away. You're going to want to take your Kaldari frigate skill up to four. This is the maximum that you can do as an alpha, and it's going to get you the most out of the ship. Now let's dive into the fit. Total cost here is going to be about 20 million isk. This includes a starting filament pack. With each video in this series, the fits are going to get a little bit more expensive. You do have to spend money to make money. Now the highs, we are going to use three of the light missile launcher tech twos. You're going to use tech two launchers, but you're still going to use the faction ammo. I've been prioritizing other skills and have not been able to get the tech two ammo yet. We'll talk more about skills in just a sec. For the mids, we've opted for more of a buffer tank with our small shield extender. The extender increases the amount of raw shield we have. And then we have a small shield booster that we can leave on all the time due to the fact that we are cap stable. We are cap stable due to our two engineering modules here, a cap recharger and a small cap battery. The battery gives us an increase to our overall cap and the recharger increases the rate that we recover that cap. And finally, we have an afterburner. This is going to increase our speed. Now we're not running any increases to our resists in the mids because the afterburner is going to do that for us. Now in our past video, the Korax uses a micro warp drive and goes way faster than the hook bill. But the hook bill is a smaller ship. So even though it's going slower, it's more difficult to hit. So if you're playing this right, the enemy ships are going to have a harder time hitting you. So we don't need the resists. Piccolo would be proud of me. We're dodging all the attacks. <laughs> As for the lows, we are going to run two ballistic control system twos. These are the tech two variants to pump out some DPS. And before I go any further, if your CPU or if your power grid are over, you can see that we have zero power grid left. It's because your skills aren't there yet. I'm going to talk about skills in just a moment. Stay with me. Finally, for our rigs, we have a single EM shield reinforcer. We do want to plug the EM hole that the hook bill has, and that's what this rig is for. And then we're going to have two small processor overclocking units. Now, these increase your ship CPU. As a general rule, I don't like using rigs that increase power grid or CPU, because the more you fit to increase your ship's CPU and power grid, the less actual buffs you're getting to your ship. With that said, this is a newly made alpha character. We don't have a lot of the skills yet to do that. So we're going to put some modules in the rigs to augment our low skills. Now, the ammo you're going to bring is going to be bound to the filament you're going to use in the abyss. So more on that later. Let's talk about our skills right now. The two reasons we did not start in the hook bill when we made this alpha abyss series, it's a bit too expensive for day one new bros. And also there's a lot of skill requirements you need to make a frigate fly right. Like it fry. Frigate fly. You get the idea. You're going to look at every single skill here that has a white box next to it under the missile tab. And you're going to train these up as high as you can. Next thing you're going to do is go into the navigation tab and get every single one of these skills too that have white boxes next to their names. In the shield tab, you're going to make sure you have shield compensation skills, shield management, and shield operation. And finally, you need to get these engineering skills up as much as possible. CPU management, power grid management, and capacitor management are going to increase the resources on every Every single one of your ships. So if you're noticing that your CPU and power grid are over, it's because those skills under the engineering tab are not as high as they should be. And finally, y'all, you need thermodynamics and weapon upgrades. Weapon upgrades is going to let you fit a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. And you're going to see how we utilize the overheat mechanic that the thermodynamics skill offers later in the video. Literally saves our life. Now, some of you are looking at this going 16 day skills, Loru. That's a long time. I completely understand your pain. This is an alpha character on purpose. I wanted to feel the things that y'all are feeling 
struggling see the struggles that alphas are going through since it's been a while since I was in this position. So what I recommend you do with these 16 day skills is don't train them, buy them. Now wait before I lose you. You don't need to get Omega to do this and you don't need to spend a lot of money. There's something called daily alpha injectors, which you could find by going right into the Eve store and typing daily alpha. And here they are. Now, if you drop five or 10 bones on this and speed up your skill training by a lot, you can only inject one of these a day. So what I've done in the past is I buy a couple of these. I bring in my 16 day skill at the top, inject some skill points on top of it, train as much as I can and move it back down. Point is, I'm not going to use the daily alpha injector on these like two day, three day skills. There's no wasted skill points here. I just want to make sure that I'm using something I bought to speed up these half a month training skills. Now you could go into the new Eden store and buy Plex that way. But as many of you know, we are affiliates with Marquee Dragon's EVE Online store. You can get the same items you would have in the shop for cheaper if you go to his store and use code LORU at checkout. As of the recording of this video, there's a bunch of these awesome bloodlust packs. We're recording this around Halloween. So if you want any of these, just add something to cart and at checkout, you're going to put code LORU right here. Press apply and you can see your discount was applied. Now I know it's not a lot of money off. It's only 3% off, but it's the same items as in the EVE store just for less money. And in full transparency, I do get a kickback if you use my code. So if you're an alpha and you just want to speed up your training a little bit, head down to Marquee Dragon store, get you some Plex. It's delivered instantly to your character in game. And then you can buy your daily alpha injectors from there. It's a win, 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 no matter what you're looking at. Now that code Loru does not expire. So anytime you want to get some items, just remember to use my code and you're going to get it for cheaper. Thank you very much. Now with my current skills, we're going to do just under 100 DPS with 4,200 EHP. That amount of DPS coupled with our speed is going to let us go into specific abyss. We're going to be doing two mainly. We're going to be using the dark and the gamma filaments. Now we have full walkthroughs of each at the end of this video. But just to sum up, gamma filaments are going to increase your shield HP, but reduce your explosive resistance. Now your explosive resistance is the highest one you have for your shield. So we're not too worried about that. The enemies in the abyss also get bonus shield HP and a reduction to their explosive resistance. So when you run the calm gamma filaments, you're going to bring the Nova light ammo. Kaldari Nova light is going to do explosive damage. And I recommend running and calm gammas if you're just getting into this fit, it's a little bit more forgiving and isn't so high on the skill cap because of that increased shield buffer that you have. As you get better with this, you're going to dive into the dark filament. Now, dark filaments, you and everything else in there, it's going to get a bonus to your velocity. You go real fast. And the penalty is the turret range. Now, you don't run turrets, so you don't get any of these negative effects. A bunch of enemies in there do, so you're going to be able to go faster than them, outrange them, and their turret range sucks. You're not going to go 1,000 MS you're going to go something closer to 13 or 1400. It is very exciting. You have to be sure when you're flying in dark filaments that you don't run out of bounds of the abyss and start dying real fast. And y'all, before I literally go into the abyss and show y'all what's what, we got some special announcements for you. Now, we are EVE partners. That means we get skins to give away to you. These skins are valued at multiple hundreds of millions of ISK, and one lucky winner of a giveaway in this video is going to get that skin. We are also going to be giving away three of these hook bills fully fitted, ready for all the new bros to dive into the abyss. We're giving away ships and skins with every single one of these videos to help all you newbers out to achieve your new Eden dreams. Do these three things and you'll be entered in. You have to be subscribed to the channel. My bot's gonna know if you're not subscribed, then you'll be disqualified. In the comments, type use code LORU. We wanna make sure you remember about that affiliate code, thank you. Finally, you're gonna put your in-game name in that same comment. I have to know who the heck I'm gonna send the contract to. Check back a couple days after. We announce the winners of these giveaways in the community section of our YouTube page. And y'all, as of the recording of this video, we're close to 7,700 hundred subscribes. Now I just want to say thanks. The Discord's growing. Twitch is growing. Hell, even Kick is growing. We are everywhere, by the way. So thank you for helping this community grow into what I know it can be. And now let's go into the abyss. Okay, we're in a dark abyss run right now. And this is going to be one of the scariest rooms you're ever going to encounter. This is the Kikimora room. Now you might be tempted to hit the Davimic first because it is the frigate, but do not do that. It is a mistake. The Kikimora does so much damage and you're going to see right away we start targeting it. No loot, no nothing and start hitting this thing. Now I'm looking around, looking for weather effects, trying to get the hell out of there because those clouds always do something negative to you and you just want to not be in those. Now all the Triglavian ships are going to do stacking damage to you the longer that they're spooling up on you. So you can use the fact that we go fast in this dark abyss to get the hell away from the uh, Kiki. We overload our shield module and our movement module to heal back what the Kiki's done to us and get the hell out. You can see we're going close to 1800 right here. Once I see that we're starting to get a far away from the Kiki, nothing's hitting us. You can look at the combat text in the middle of the screen. We turn off the overloads. Now I start thinking about we're coming to the edge of the abyss so we don't want to run over. So it's at this point we start making our way towards some loot. We know 
that the loot is not going to be outside of the abyss, so we use that to kind of like see where the edges are. Kiki Moore is at about half health, and it's right now that I overload our high slots. We have taken a lot of heat damage to our mids here, so you want to try to augment this by overloading whichever one you can. And this is one of the reasons thermodynamics is so important to this. You have to get used to overheating, overloading, seeing which one's going to work for you. Just remember, if you overheat too much, you're going to break your modules and they're going to become unusable and you will die. Ask me how I know. Because now that we've killed the Kiki, the thing that's going to kill us isn't the Davimic, it's the clock. We only have 20 minutes to get out of this abyss in all three rooms. We've used about one third of our timer so far. It's in the top left corner for you. Now that we've killed both those loot caches and we're able to go loot those, I start targeting the Davimic, taking them out. I'm going to fast forward to the next room so y'all can see some other good stuff. All right, y'all, this is the room right after that Kiki Mora, and we see that we're facing a Lashak. Now, this is a Triglavian battleship, and he hits like a freaking truck. You're going to outrange him, and you're going to start missile peppering him immediately. Now, we don't overheat anything right away. We're trying to balance where we are comparatively to him. Now, I've set an orbit going at 37 km away from the Lashak. This, coupled with our speed, is going to make sure we have a nice wide arc, and you can see he's missing us completely, doing no damage to us. Because I want to make sure I get out of here in an effective time, I'm overheating my high slots. You can see me looking at my heat modules and mousing over my missile launchers themselves to make sure that we're not burning them out. Once my heat gets high enough on the over, on the thermodynamics module here, keeping the main modules on, but turning off the over the overheating. This is making sure that we're applying proper DPS to the Lashak, because what I'm thinking right now is that the Lashak, he's not hitting me a lot. Again, the timer is what's going to kill me. Because we're in a dark filament room, we're going way faster, almost 1500, but the Lashak can't touch me. The other thing I'm doing here as I'm orbiting him is I'm making sure I'm not super close to the edge. You see me kind of zoom out and zoom in and checking in on where we are comparatively. You're going to know if you're at the edge of the abyss, if you see like a red almost gate around where your character is, and the Lashak goes down and we start looting stuff. And I'm going to pause the clip right here because we were able to get just shy of 8 million isk in that one run. It took us about nine minutes. So if we do the math, 7760, roughly speaking, you're going to get six of those runs in an hour. That's 47 million an hour. That sounds pretty good to me. We got one more room to show for you. I have to show you this room because it's the worst room you're ever going to encounter. This Tyrannos battleship is a drifter and does way a lot of DPS. Read, it can kill you. One shot takes us down to one quarter shield. I do panic here a little bit, but we overload both our afterburner and our shield recharger to be able to close the distance and to get our health back as quickly as possible. If you ever face this mob, you need to get right up on top of him. I tend to go between 17 and 20 km away and just go in a nice U arc back and forth. He will keep doing all this damage to you until you get that close to him. You can see he's starting to miss me a little bit. The shots are going right past me. Now we're able to apply effective damage. Now this mob likes to go to the outside of the abyss boundary, so you need to be careful how you're flying this. I'm pausing the clip here because you're going to see that I have a point in space marked right here. Now the mob is here. I'm going to go all the way over to the edge of this cloud, and then I'm going to turn back around in a straight line. I'm going to keep doing this until this mob is dead. You have to be sure you don't go to the edge of the abyss and take a bunch of damage. Something I also do just, just for time is I overheat my high slot here. It may not look it, but this guy has a bunch of health. It's a battleship. So if you're going to take it down in a frigate, you have to overheat appropriately. One day we're going to do like a John Madden cosplay or something. You see, what you do is you take the Tyrannus and you got to give him the missile. And more in another video. Now we do take that guy out and end up leaving leaving with 7.3 million isk. And it took me about 11 minutes. So as you get faster doing this, you're going to be able to approach 50 million isk an hour. Now I'm having a bunch of fun doing these Alpha Abyss series. We've got even more coming. Where we're going to work up to some big cruisers for you. Those videos are going to be able to do hundreds of millions of isk an hour as an Alpha character. As we make those videos, we're going to put them on our Alpha Abyss playlist right here. Make sure you don't miss any of these videos. As always, sub for more EVE Online content. We're putting out all the good stuff for you. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.